How's it going? I'm Alex Arnold, and I'm going to start with what is electrocardiography. Electrocardiography, also known as ECG, is a transthoracic, meaning across the thoracic cavity or across the chest, which is an interpretation of the electrical activity of the heart over a period of time, as detected by electrodes attached to the outer surface of the skin and recorded by a device external to the body. The recording produced is a non-invasive procedure that is termed electrocardiography or cardiogram, electrocardiogram. It is used to measure the rate and regularity of heartbeats as well as the size and position of the chambers, the presence of any damage to the heart, and the effects of drugs or devices used to regulate the heart such as a pacemaker. The ECG device detects and amplifies tiny electrical charges on the skin that are caused by the heart or when the heart depolarizes, which happens every heartbeat. During each heartbeat, a healthy heart has an orderly progression of a wave of depolarization that is triggered by the cells in the sinoatrial node, spreads out through the atrium, passes through the atrioventricular node, and then spreads all over the ventricles. This is then detected as tiny rises and falls in the voltage between two electrodes that are placed on either side of the heart, which is displayed as a wavy line either on a screen or on a piece of paper. This display indicates the overall rhythm of the heart and weaknesses in different parts of the heart's muscle. Next, I'm gonna explain Enthoven's triangle. William Enthoven is a pioneer of electrocardiography creating the basic system of measure for electrical activity of the heart. The original layout is still used today, which is a basic three-lead electrocardiogram, consisting of placing electrodes at the right arm, the left arm, and the left leg, varying the placement of positive, negative, and ground wires. The general idea of the heart's electrical activity can be observed. The term lead refers to the view of the heart's activity that you are looking at at that particular time. Next, I'm going to direct your attention to a picture so I can explain this further. Lead one and lead two and lead three are all dipole, which means they are a pair of equally and oppositely charged poles separated by a particular distance. Lead one has its negative electrode at the right arm, which is the white electrode, and the positive electrode at the left arm, the black electrode. Lead two has its negative electrode at the right arm, the white electrode and the positive electrode at the left leg, which is the red electrode. The third and last lead has its negative electrode at the left arm, which is the black electrode, and the positive electrode at the left leg, which is the red electrode. This all creates an upside down triangle, also known as Enthoven's triangle. Now that you know what an ECG is and kind of how it works, now I'm going to explain how to apply a 12 lead ECG. Now compared to Einthoven's triangle that Alex just explained, the 12-lead ECG um, provides a more in-depth analysis of heart activity. Whereas Einthoven's triangle can only um, record heart rate and rhythm, the 12-lead ECG can record and help diagnose a wide variety of cardiac conditions. Now when someone hears 12-lead ECG, they assume that 12 electrodes are going to be used. However, that's not the case. Only 10 are going to be used. Um, the reason for this is because the, the term lead actually means a particular view of the heart. Now, so a 12 lead ECG means that the heart is going to be viewed from 12 different views. So think of a lead as a picture, and the 10 electrodes used in a 12 lead ECG is going to provide us with 12 pictures of the heart. All right, now I'm going to show you how to apply a 12 lead ECG to a patient. Um, first, we're going to start by informing the patient to line a supine position as he is now with the shirt off. This gives us um, easy access to his skin where the electrodes are going to be placed. Um, then we're going to inform him to remove all electro, electrical um, devices because such as cell phones, pagers, things of that nature, because these can be picked up by the ECG monitor. And we want the only electroactivity to be picked up from the heart, and that's all, no, no external devices. Um, now, now we're going to start by applying the limb leads, the four limb leads. Um, now these differ from exercise and resting. Today I'm going to show you where to apply them if you are going to perform exercise test. Um, but also I'm going to note where you would place them if they were dur during rest. First I'm going to explain where you're going to place them during rest. 
during rest, you're going to place one on the right arm, one on the left arm. Um, on the arms, it's going to be in between the shoulder and the wrist. So anywhere in between there. Um, same on the left arm. Um, now for the legs, you could put it in between the torso and the ankles. So you could put it on the thigh. That's for resting. Now for exercise, we typically do it more towards the midline. Um, the reason for that is because if it's placed on the limbs and the extremities where during rest, as it is during rest, then a lot of artifact because they'll be moving those limbs during the exercise, will which will cause um, air in the ECG recording. Now I'm going to apply the four exercise limb leads. The one, the right exercise, the right limb lead is going to place in the upper right aspect of the chest and shoulder region, just below the distal end of the right clavicle, so in the in the fossa, so just about right here. Now the left one is going to be placed in the same area except on the left side. Now the lower limb leads are going to be placed in the lower right anterior, anterior lateral surface of the external oblique muscle, just above the iliac crest at the level of the navel on the anterior surface of the, of the abdomen. So just above the iliac crest and the level of the navel. And the same thing is going to be for the right side. Now I'm going to mark the six chest leads. Um, and now these are the same no matter if it's during exercise or during rest, they are always the same. Um, now these six leads are named V1 through V6. I'm going to start off by marking V1. Now V1 is on the, the patient's right side of their sternum, my left side. So you're going to find their sternum and you're going to find their clavicle. And they're going to go to the fourth intercostal space. So you're going to palpate that. Now key to this is you don't want to just eye it up and just pick going because the, the where you place these is essential um, to the recordings being correct. So you can't just eye it up and place them wherever you want. You need to make sure you place them in the right anatom anatomical position. All right, now I'm going to mark the V2 lead, um, which is at the same level as the V1 lead, the fourth intercostal space, but it's going to be on his left side of a, of his sternum. Um, so first we're going to palpate the clavicle and go down to the fourth intercostal space. Mark that. Next we're going to skip to the V4 um, chest lead. Um, for that you're going to go to the middle of the clavicle. So you're going to probably find the middle of the clavicle. And that's going to be in the fifth intercostal space. So go down. Next, we're going to go to the V3 lead, which is going to be in between the V2 and V3 lead. So that's going to be right in between these two markings right here. That's right there. All right. Next, we're going to go to the V5 lead, which is going to be um, in line with the anterior axillary line, which is right at the bit in the anterior aspect of the armpit, and the same level as the V4 lead. So in the fifth intercostal space. Go here. Finally, we're going to we're going to mark the where the V6 lead is going to occur, and that's going to be in the axillary line, mid axillary line, so the center of his armpit, the same level as V5. And now, once again, placement of this is critical for the ECG recordings to be correct. So don't just eye it up. Palpate each anatomical position and place them in the correct correct spots. All right, now that each site is marked, now we're going to begin the cleaning process. Um, to do this, we're going to start by getting an alcohol wipe, and we're going to rub down each each site. Now, the cleaning process is vital to this working, because if there's not good contact between the electrode and um, the skin, then the electrode may fall off during the test, which is not what we want. Um, we need to make sure that it stays in contact um, for good results, so you do not overlook the cleaning process just to save some time. All right, once wiped down with the alcohol swab, then we're going to get a gauze, a gauze pad and just, just to dry the area and wipe it um, additionally. Next we're going to take an abrasor and rub each site vigorously. Now I know this may seem excessive um, and the skin may should turn red or pink. Um, you should rub that hard but 
but this is important because good contact is essential for the ECG to work effectively. So just inform the patient they may feel some discomfort 